I'm Nick Pettit. I'm Jason Cipher. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about time pickers, decimals, text areas, and more. Let's check it out. First up is clock picker. Now, if you've ever seen like a date picker for maybe a calendar where you want to pick a specific date and you click on it and a little calendar flies out. Well, this is the same thing only for picking times. This is a time picker for Bootstrap, but you can also use it with jQuery. It was originally designed to be used for Bootstrap. So Bootstrap and jQuery are the only dependencies, but it's pretty cool. So when you have a time here, you could go ahead and just type in, or whoa, you could use this cool UI widget that flies out. Now here, you can pick an hour, or you can pick you know, the uh, military time if you prefer that, and then you can pick a minute here. So you can swing all the way around, and then you just click this button that I assume says OK, and that will give you the time. So not a whole lot to say about it. There's a few more features that you can dig into here yourself, but very cool piece of UI. I've never really seen anything quite like that, so definitely be sure to check this one out. Yeah, very nice. I picked that one for my time picking library. Next up, we have a project called decimal.js, which is an arbitrary precision decimal type for JavaScript. Now, if you need to use decimals rather than floating point numbers in your JavaScript programs, this is the library for you. Um, this is a fast, small, and easier to use version of JavaScript uh, for Java's big decimal library. It's a very simple and full featured API. I know because it says that right in the feature list. And these are all of the different methods that it supports. You can do uh, division, subtraction, addition, all of the math that you would expect to. It also uh, does exponential floors, negation, logarithms, and just a ton of different things. Now, it has a very comprehensive documentation suite, so you can see how exactly to work with the decimal library. Now, you're going to want to use this if you need to use arbitrary precision decimals rather than just regular floating point numbers in JavaScript. And you can see it supports random, square root, power, max, min, exponents, just a ton of different things. And it has all the different properties. So if you are looking for a decimal library, go ahead and check this out. We will have a link to it in the show notes. Sounds like they did the math. Should have seen that coming, but I just didn't put two and two together. Next up is International Telephone Input. This is a jQuery plugin for entering and validating international telephone numbers. Man. I hope those bad jokes don't cause a division between us. Here's a really cool demo of international telephone input. Here is what a phone number looks like when it's formatted for the United States. It uses plus one, I guess, because the US thinks it's number one. There's the United Kingdom, which is plus 44. That's the country code there. But if I click off of this to remove it from my browser focus, you can see that it shows how a number should be formatted for the UK. Now, this little flag icon is pretty cool because you can click here and scroll through all these different countries from all around the world. And you can select one of them. And again, same thing. You can see the country code and how a phone number should be formatted for that country. Now, this is very useful if you've ever tried to do internationalization on an app. You know that that is something that's pretty complex. And it's because of things like this, little things like phone numbers that you wouldn't really think about end up being a very complicated affair because you have to properly format the phone number for every single country. So this is a very handy plugin for jQuery if you need to, again, internationalize your phone numbers. Very nice. Next up, we have a library called Squire, which is a 
text area of the future. I know that because it says that right there in the header of the website. So here is a sample text area and you can see I have already filled it in with some information. And up across the top here, we have a toolbar which will let us do different formatting for these items. And we can choose what we want. Let's go ahead and put that in mono space and make it medium sized. Okay, that looks good. We can even change the font or do different lists. Now, this is an HTML5 rich text editor. It is very, very easy to use. Instead of a text area, you just give it a link to an iframe. You can get the code up on GitHub. We'll have a link to that in the show notes. And then it tells you how to go through and install and use it. Now you can use more than one text area on the page if you want to. Uh, this works pretty well with Node, but you do not have to use Node unless you want to use the test suite and build it yourself. Not too much to say about it. It's just a really good, really fast uh, HTML5 rich text editor. So check that out if you are in the market for one. Very cool stuff. Next up is the state of web type. This is an up-to-date data on support for type and typographic features on the web. You can search or choose from the features below to get started. So basically, this is just like can I use, but it's a little bit more in-depth and focused specifically on fonts. So for example, I can click on something like font face here. And it will tell me, oh, okay, font face is supported in all of these major browsers and it's supported as far back as Internet Explorer 6. Okay, great, this is something that's definitely gonna be safe to use. However, if you click on something else like SVG fonts, there's not as good support there. There's partial support in a lot of versions of Chrome and there's only uh, some support in other browsers. There's not support in Firefox or Internet Explorer. And, oh, look, recently they have also been marked as deprecated in Chrome and Opera. Do not use them. See, that's the kind of great stuff that you can find on this website. Anyway, there's a whole lot of other font features here. So if you are using fonts on your website, which you probably, probably are. are. Definitely be sure to check that out. Uh, next up, Nick, we have something that we don't often have on the show. In fact, this would be the first time, which is what I mean by not often. One of our students, a man named Johnny Rate, got in contact with us and asked us for help proposing to his girlfriend, Lauren Clark. So let's see if we can get a picture of the happy couple up on the screen here. Uh, Lauren Johnny would like to say that he is immensely proud to have been able to call you his girlfriend for almost the last five years and was hoping you would do him the honor of agreeing to be his wife. And uh, he promises to never make you second rate. Get it? Because his last name's Rate. I got the joke. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm really sad that we couldn't be there for that photo. Could we maybe get us in the picture there? Because there we go. Oh, that looks good. That is that is so much better. I know we re we really tie the room together in that picture. Yeah, that just that feels right. Anyway, um, they're going on a trip to Amsterdam, so have a lot of fun. Congratulations, and we'll see you next week. See you later.